Hello, welcome to another episode of Cool Stuff with Kyle. Today we have here a variety of glass insulators. These are mostly ones that my son and I found. Uh, <clears throat> my son in particular is a rail fan, so he likes to go out and, and uh, watch trains that go by and that kind of thing. And glass insulators were commonly used along railway lines. So that's actually a really good way to find them is you find old abandoned railway lines and you can sometimes find these on the ground when they've fallen off of the poles after a number of years or uh, you can actually collect them off of the poles if the poles have been abandoned. Obviously, common sense here, if there are still wires connected to those and they might still be in use, you leave them alone. But if they're abandoned, there's no railway going by there anymore, they're pretty much free game. Um, so, this is what we have here. Uh, let's start by talking about this one. So. What, uh, what do we call this? So this is a CD214 cable top, nicknamed a cricket head. So a lot of insulators have nicknames, and each one that you see here, are, for the most part, has a different CD number, which is Consolidated Design. It's called CD or Consolidated Design because multiple companies could use the same design with slight variations for their insulators. This one would be a CD154. Um, so as a white all Tatum, it didn't have a specific, uh, well actually for a little bit it had number one. Uh, and then the lower number that you see, 38 in this case, um, I believe is the mold number in the factory. Uh, because when you find multiple of these on the same pole, uh, the numbers won't be very far apart. Over here you see an insulator that's similarly designed, except if you look, this one was made by Hemingway, which was one of the most popular insulator manufacturing companies for a long time. So, multiple companies share the same design. As a Hemingway, it's called a Hemingway 42. There's many variations. This is a short mold, an early short mold. Now, another thing you notice, this piece is very clear compared to this piece right here, which is light peach. So they're actually considered different colors, right? Yes. So then over here, you'll move into aqua insulators. Um, these are all considered different shades of aqua. Uh, for example, in these beehives back here, they're all made by Hemingway, except they have different fonts. So if you look over here, it's a smaller one. In the middle, it's a larger one. And on this other side, it's a larger one, just a different style. These are all likely from a similar era, and they're all colored what's called Hemingway blue. It's a shade of aqua. This is caused by iron and other impurities getting into the glass, because no quality control was really needed. All it was was, you know, a simple glass molded product, and they used dirty sand. So here you see some earlier insulators. This is a Brookfield CD116, nicknamed a three rumple. Um, now if the back of the skirt weren't blown out here, this would be worth about $200 in the color it's in. These three, uh, oh, and this could be from anywhere from about 1886 to, I believe, 1905. That's old. Yeah, these three here um, are all CD133s made by Brookfield. They share a similar color, uh, that early light aqua tone, and they could be very, very old. These are all threaded. There are threadless insulators that exist. Threaded meaning that inside there, there are threads here. This threads onto typically a wooden peg, right? Yep. A wooden peg in its time. Uh, there were metal pegs with wooden cobs, but these kind of insulators wouldn't have been applied. Something more like this would have gone on a metal peg. So one of these insulators actually shows a great uh, example of how impure this glass could and was uh, could be and was. So we'll look on the scale here um, because one of these has what appears to be a big chunk of lead in it. We're not exactly sure what metal it might be, but we're sure that it is metal and uh, makes a big difference. So weighing one of them, you see it's 468 grams without uh, you know large impurities. Another that's pretty clean. 470 grams, and you take the one with the rather large chunk of metal in, and you see 501 grams. So a lot of things got into these. There's been known to be nails, and that's because when they were making the glass, they would actually just melt down the sand, pour it into sticks on the factory floor, and then break them apart. And they'd only make insulators when they were ready by melting the glass again. This uh, gave another opportunity for even more impurities than what was it, were in the sand to get into the insulators and uh, you end up with stuff like that. Over here you have some kind of mid-range insulators that could be from around 1910 to 1920. This is a CD-152, nicknamed a hoop skirt. It was made by Brookfield, Hemingway, and a few other companies. 
so this brook field here is a smooth base uh, found in the wild and it's a nice kind of green aqua color. This one is a later brook field with drip points. They're harder to find that way. A nice bubble and um, but it is the same design, CD-152. So I've just grabbed a Hemingway CD-152. Uh, these are among the most common insulators, um, as well as these here. Um, these Brookfields might be a little more rare in our area. Um, the insulators you see here, all four in this line, are very old and uh, pretty rare, unless you kind of find them in the right spot. But um, as you can see, once again, you share a very similar design, and uh, this was some cooperation between those companies. Another thing is, you can get custom-made insulators, ones that they didn't actually use, you know, out there in the wild. This is just something that was made uh, for people to appreciate at home. This one in particular, it actually has UV reactive uh, elements in the glass. I don't think this one is probably uranium, it's probably cadmium in here, if I had to guess. But you can probably see on the video there that it glows under this UV light, this black light. Um, as does this uranium glass, which of course I collect. But uh, this one was, was made specifically just uh, for a commemorative uh, piece. It was actually, it says here on the bottom, it was from the Springfield, Ohio uh, NIA, that's National Insulator Association Convention, um, the 34th annual, and that was in 2003. And uh, so I, I purchased this one, uh, not at the convention. I wasn't there, unfortunately. Maybe I'll be at the next one. But uh, I just thought that was neat, a neat thing to put in my cabinet of gluey glass. So uh, a very cheap way to glass collect if you, uh, you know, can safely go out to get insulators. It's a great way to get into glass collecting. It's kind of a last generation thing right now because these poles are all rotting out there and uh, very few are still in use. The ones that are still in use are uh, very rare and the railroads have been knocking them down uh, very fast. So. It's a good time to get out and get some of these um, if you see standing poles without any wires on them. So thank you for watching. Remember, until next time, the world is full of cool stuff. Go out and find some.